Hi everybody! Today I would like to talk about five albums which are absolutely stunning. We all like good sounding records, but sometimes we have to spend a lot of money for them. Sometimes you pay between 50 and 200 euros, for example, one steps. And are there alternatives out there? I would like to discuss this topic today with you. So I've prepared this one as first album. It's The Kings Face to Face and it's a mono reissue. It's from the label Sanctuary Records. Uh, it was pressed in 2015 in the United States. And there is something specific about this album. It's mastered by Kevin Gray from the original Pi Master Tapes. I only had to pay 30 euros for this album and it's really a good deal. So what can I tell you about this album? It's the fourth studio album by the English rock band The Kings. Originally it was released in 1966. This album contains the tracks Dandy and Sunny Afternoon. They are very well known. Uh, my favorites are Most Exclusive Residence for Sale, Too Much on My Mind and Session Man. Ray Davies started to introduce a new style of writing, though the songs were described as observational and satirical on English class and culture. The sound is exceptional, punchy and clear, so it's a pleasure and entertaining. Highly recommended. So, time for number two. That's this album here, Leonard Cohen, Songs of Leonard Cohen. It's a reissue from Europe 2016 and the label is Columbia and Sony Music. Something interesting about it, the matrix indicates a music on vinyl product. That's, yes, quite interesting. It was very inexpensive. I only paid 25 euros for this perfect album. What can I say about it? It was originally released in 1967 by folk singer and songwriter Leonard Cohen. This debut was successful here in Europe, not so much in the States. Suzanne, for example, it's the first track here, I guess. Uh, took Leonard a long time to write, presumably four to five months. Cohn decided that this album should have a sparse sound. This record is an excellent pressing. There aren't any clicks or bobs on it. Sound quality is fantastic and somewhat warm and involving. It's a must-have record. <laughs> The next album is a recommendation of my friend Harold. It's Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, Dallas Taylor and Greg Reeves. Deja Vu. It's in strong near mint condition. It's an original from 1970, United States of America, and it has some specifics. It's gold imprinted on a textured four leather gatefold cover. There is also a photograph on the front cover. I paid a little bit more than usual. It cost 79 euro, but I really, I'm really happy to own this record. The condition is absolute stunning. It's nearly new and it's very old in the meantime. Some facts about this record. This album is the first album by Grosby, Stills, Nash and Young. In 2021, it marked its 50th anniversary. Supposedly, it took approximately 800 hours of studio time to record this masterpiece. That's really impressive. The first track starts with Carry On by Stephen Stills, a strong and convincing start. In my opinion, perfect songs are, for example, Helpless by Neil Young, 
4 plus 20 by Stephen Stills and Country Girl by Neil Young. It's folk rock at its best, very enjoyable to listen to. Especially the guitars perform above average. There is no harshness at all. I am happy to own this pressing. Only for you. Number four is something new and I really would like to make a short presentation about this album because I really really like it. Take a look here. There is a glossy cover. There is a thick cardboard. Perfect images and it's called Father John Misty, Chloe and the next 20th century. The label is Bella Union and it's a European Union pressing uh, out of 2022. I paid 28 euros for this album. Some facts about it. It's the fifth studio album by American Joss Dillman. This album draws inspiration from traditional pop, jazz standards and big band. Uh, when listening to this album, you first recognize the room and the air in the sound. It's perfectly balanced and it makes fun listen to it. You can discover in the music elements from the 40s and from the 60s. Some may argue there is a reference to Hollywood, but this album pleases sound-wise and from the fact that it differs generally from new releases. Highly recommendable. Work of some semi inside the weekend book it. Last but not least, number five, Julie London, Julie London at Home. It's from the label Liberty EMS. It's in near mint condition. It's a reissue from 1986, uh, United Kingdom and I only paid 27 euros for this album. Some facts. This album was recorded in Julie's own living room in 1960. The atmosphere seems to be very relaxed and especially Julie's voice is somewhat warm and easy. You can literally smell the fireplace in the living room, like here. The separation of the instruments is perfect you can enjoy this record from start to finish. Between 1955 and 1969, Julie recorded more than 30 albums of pop and jazz standards. I would say her voice is breathtaking and this album is highly recommended. That takes me back. Never thought my heart could be so yearning.